Hello, we're World Clinicians. This is Ali Nesse, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Dr. Sharona Dayan. Uh, Dr. Dayan is a periodontist and also a, uh, an expert in oral medicine. Uh, Dr. Dayan has a clinical practice in periodontics in uh, Western Massachusetts, and she is also the uh, director of the Seattle Study Club branch in the Boston area, the Boston Dental Alliance. Dr. Dayan, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Diane has also a doctorate in oral medicine and is also very interested in the area of diabetes. And today we have the uh, pleasure of interviewing her regarding a recent uh, webinar that she did on explaining the role of uh, diabetes uh, in periodontal disease as well as uh, increasing the awareness about some of the problems involved with this uh, vicious disease. Well, uh, Dr. Diane, if you don't mind, just at the beginning, if you can just give our viewers a little bit of an explanation about what is diabetes and how does it affect the uh, body as well as the mouth. Of course. Diabetes is the fastest growing epidemic in our nation. And uh, currently, about 20 million people have been diagnosed with diabetes, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are one million new cases diagnosed every year. Mm. 79 million Americans are pre-diabetic, so just about to become di diabetic, um, and it does contribute to the nation's number one killer, heart attack. Mm. It's the leading cause of blindness in the United States, and it's also the leading cause of leg amputations in the United States. Basically, diabetes is a problem with insulin. So either not enough insulin is being made by the pancreas, or there is insulin being made, but the receptors are not responding to insulin. So insulin doesn't activate the cells. So on the right, in the presence of insulin, insulin will bind the receptors on the cells and tell the cells that it's okay to allow glucose to enter. On the left-hand side, if there's no insulin, or if the insulin binds the receptor but doesn't activate the receptor properly, glucose remains outside the cell. And as a consequence, glucose builds up in the blood vessels, in the tissue, and patients develop atherosclerosis, microvascular disease, and this atherosclerosis is what is responsible for the morbidity and the mortality of diabetes. So that is basically how it affects the, the, the body is, and, and the mouth is it basically the same kind of a uh, phenomenon as well. So you, the atherosclerosis creates some kind of an end arterial disease and that affects also the periodontal tissues. Is that? It certainly impairs the patient's abilities to heal. Mm -hmm. So diabetic patients don't heal as well from surgery. Um, and it does render the patients more susceptible to um, infection. That is basically its role in inflammation, right? So can you describe to our viewers the role of diabetes and inflammation and how it basically affects it? Inflammation is um, currently being researched as one of the most harmful chronic conditions in the body. So of course it's very helpful when it's acute and it's protecting the body, but when it's chronic it can be very destructive. Abdominal fat cells release tremendous amounts of inflammatory mediators, such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF alpha. And TNF alpha upregulates the proteins that are involved with insulin resistance. Um, so the cells just don't respond to insulin. And the importance of inflammation in developing both type 1 and type 2 diabetes has been illustrated in a number of studies, especially in this landmark study that was published in the Nature magazine, where obese mice were deleted uh, for the gene that produces TNF-alpha, and the mice that did not produce TNF-alpha were protected from developing diabetes. So obesity was not sufficient by itself to cause diabetes. TNF-alpha and inflammation had to be present. That's amazing. So obviously the role, um, TNF-alpha um, clearly having a significant role in, 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 in inflammation, when you have the knockout uh, gene, you get the genotype is gone, so that creates a phenotype that is protective. 
So that's interesting. So obviously, TNF alpha also having a role in cancer and so on. Then, is there any kind of a relationship between cancer and diabetes? Well, it's interesting um, that we talk about cancer and diabetes in the same sentence. Abdominal fat cells and the abdomen does seem to be the most dangerous place to lay down fat. Abdominal fat cells release tremendous amounts of insulin growth factor, which uh, causes cells to multiply. And also abdominal fat cells release large amounts of estrogen. Hmm. So we have a lot of um, hormones that are being released by the fat cells. And remember that there is a lot of sugar in the bloodstream and in the tissues. And sugar is what cancer cells need to grow and multiply. So they have a food source. Hmm. So when you have the combination of uh, growth factors and sugar, it can render diabetic patients more susceptible. 25% of cancer patients are diabetic, hmm. and uh, especially with colon cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer. And unfortunately, having diabetes um, also means that the patients have poorer treatment outcomes with cancer treatment. Diabetic patients just don't do as well with cancer treatment. That's amazing. So um, given that particular uh, genotype and the presence of abundant sugar in the uh, blood plasma, you will be able to feed the, um, um, the cancer cells better. And I think it's almost a similar kind of a mechanism probably for infections, correct? Because mm -hmm. diabetics yes. are also more prone to infection, yes. which has something to do probably with obviously the, 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 the infl inflammation factors involved as well as the increased sugar concentration in the plasma. Yes. So uh, Dr. Diane, what would be a question that every dentist should ask their diabetic patient? The question that every practice must ask is, what is your A1C level and what is the date of your last test? <laughs> A1C is the key indicator for diabetes management. And it's a test that with just one blood draw and one test, the doctor can know about the patient's diabetes management over the last three months. Mm. And this is the number that every diabetic patient should know, and the goal is to have a score of seven or less. So in this slide, the numbers four, five, six, and seven are within the heart because those are the heart-healthy numbers. So the A1 